Hello, in this video I will give an overview of the pollination lead daylight option 1 recipe, including the recipe outputs. There will be a different video showcasing results in a pollination app, but in this video I will show the results in Grasshopper. The recipe allows users to run lead daylight option 1 studies in the pollination ecosystem by using a Honeybee JSON model. Setting up aperture groups is needed before running a study. You can set up aperture groups manually or using an automated calculation of groups. In the case study I have here, I have done the automatic calculation by using this Honeybee automatic aperture group uh, component under the Honeybee Radiance tab. And I'll then add the model to the recipe input. The recipe performs ray tracing for each aperture group individually using the enhanced two-phase method, which accurately models the direct sun by sun positions instead of a coarse sky discretization. The shading is accounted for by using a shade transmittance value, which is a multiplier value applied on the luminance values when they were shading as needed. Here I have selected a shade transmittance value of 2% or 0.02, which I have added to the recipe input. The recipe includes an automated calculation of dynamic shading schedules for each aperture group according to the 2% rule. The 2% rule states that for each hour, the maximum floor area receiving direct illuminance of 1000 lux or more cannot exceed 2%. The recipe has multiple outputs, and I have already finished a simulation with this model. Uh, as mentioned, there will be a different video showing the results in an app, and here it is in Brasabu. The first and probably the most important output is this credit summary output. It shows the summary of the whole model. It shows the annual sun, sunlight exposure, the spatial daylight autonomy, and the floor area that passes both of these, these metrics. And finally, it shows the lead credits awarded to the model, in this case, two. It is possible to get three credits if the SDA is 75% or higher. You get two credits if it is 55% or higher, and one credit if it is 40% or higher. If you have below that, you get zero credits. The next output we have is the daylight autonomy, which I have visualized here in Grasshopper or in Rhino. This is the daylight autonomy with the shading schedules applied. These values are the daylight autonomy values used in the calculation of the spatial daylight autonomy. Another input, or sorry, output of the recipe is the AC hours above. And this output uh, shows the number of hours for each sensor point where the direct illuminance is above 1000 lux. Here I set the legend maximum to 250 hours, because this is the maximum number of occupied hours allowed in the AC calculation. You can use this output to check which rooms might have problems with direct illuminance. And we can see in this case that we have these two rooms here, where there is a a large floor area here with uh, 250 or more hours receiving direct illuminance of 1000 lux or more. The next output is the dynamic schedule. These are the ones that are calculated automatically in the post-processing of the recipe. The dynamic schedule are uh, hourly data collections. 
And if we go to the top view here, we can see an example of just one of them. We get one data collection for each aperture group. And the data in these data collections are zeros and ones, where ones are the hours where the shading is applied. In this example, I have colored the shaded hours red, and we can slide through all of the, the different data collections, visualize the um, the dynamics uh, sh shading schedules for each aperture group. We can see that there are some uh, different uh, patterns here. These are highly influenced by the orientation of the aperture group, but also the combination of aperture groups within a room. Another output is the hourly percentage above. This is also an hourly data collection. Here we just have it for each grid. It shows the percentage of floor area that receives more than 1000 direct illuminance for each hour. Use this output to check which hours of the year might be problematic in terms of direct illuminance. And again, I can slide through all the different grids. Uh, to find w w which grid might be uh, problematic in terms of direct illuminance. The next output is the dynamic schedule error, which is a JSON file with a dictionary. And this dictionary shows the uh, all the hours where the 2% rule was not possible to comply with. And if I open the file and drag it to the main screen, we can see that in my case, the file is empty or the dictionary is empty. And this is because there, there were no issues. There were no hours where the 2% rule was not possible to comply with. If there are issues, you'll see the grid name and then a list of all the hours that failed. We also have the space summary, which is similar to the credit summary. It is just for each grid individually. We can see the grid uh, if we open the file. We can see the grid and the AC and SDA uh, values for each grid. And we also see that in some cases we have this note. In this case, it's because the AC is greater than 10%. And then we have to identify in writing how the space is designed to address glare. That was all the outputs of the recipe. If you have any questions about the recipe or the outputs, please post the questions on the Pollination Forum. Thank you for watching this video.